those new moths recorded new to Nottinghamshire during the course of 2021 today. I'm staying indoors. This on the computer screen behind me is a rather stunning little micro, the Micropteryx aureatella, probably the best marked of all the Micropteryx moths in the county. And apparently, according to the county recorder, this may well be a new record for Nottinghamshire, although somewhere I have records of this moth occurring at the same site as before. A number of years ago, it might have even been before my time. That's a long time ago. But this was just one of several new micromoths recorded new or potentially new for Nottinghamshire during the course of last year. It was a good year on the whole for moths in Nottinghamshire. Numbers of moths that I attracted outside here in the garden were up on previous years. There were nothing like the heady nights of 2015. Now the nine new micromoths recorded new to Nottinghamshire in 2021. I'm going to put a list up now and just go through the list initially. The order of the list that I'm going to show you follows that as developed by Agassiz, Bevan and Heckford, developed in 2013, which replaced the old Bradley and Fletcher numbering system. Now Top of the list, first one is Micropteryx aureatella, and then we've got Stigmella aceris, Bankasia conspercatella, Tinea columbariella, Calyptilia cuculi panella, Philipnistis citrella, the mugwort plume, Helensia linigianus, Cydia amplana, Graphilita rubosuschii, Pamen suspectana. Add to that the two macro moths that we'll talk about in a bit, Bilberry Pug, Passipilla debiliata, and Marsha Bleak Bard, Hyponodes humidalis. That's quite some list of new species added. I don't think there's been anywhere near 11 species new to the county list for many, many years. Now the first species on this list of new moths to Nottinghamshire in 2021 is the beautifully coloured and marked Micropteryx aureatella. Now Micropteryx are unusual in moths in that they have working mandibles and so feed on pollen rather than taking nectar through a proboscis. Micropteryx aureatella turned up on Bilbury in Thieves Wood which is just, just south of Mansfield on the A60. And I was actually looking for larval spinnings of a Tortrix moth in the hope that it might be there. I did take some larva, which ultimately turned out to be not the county's first bilberry pulse. But while looking for larva on the bush that I was looking at, sat this beautiful Micropteryx aureatella. Now the county recorder is of the opinion that my record is new for the county but there is an old record and I think it's listed on the NBN Atlas but it's, it is from the same site as Thieves Wood. It's obviously dependent on Bilbury, in fact the larva, although unknown the life cycle of the larva, is thought to feed on Bilbury. It raises the question that was sure with Forest having such a large Bilbury patch, is the moth there and indeed is Bilbury put there? So that's something that we'll be looking for during the course of this coming year. Now the next species on the list is one of two leaf miners. Surprisingly, you didn't find any more leaf miners new to Nottinghamshire. And it's Stigmella aceris, which eventually turned up at a number of other sites after I first found it 
on Norway Maple growing in Retford Cemetery. Ultimately, he went on to find it at Bardell's Garden Centre on a Norway Maple growing in the car park there, and also many examples of leaf vines on trees in Basford Cemetery. I then found it on Tolney Lane, which lies across the river from Newark Castle, and at the end of the year, when the last few leaves were still on some of the trees, found it on the Nottinghamshire side of Cresswell Crags. It's obviously widespread across Nottinghamshire, and it's a species that will probably turn up more in urban locations rather than in rural locations, due to Norway maple being a commonly planted plant on streets and in parks and gardens. It's obviously one to look out for, but surprisingly never turned up in the Mansfield and Market Warsop areas or even Worksop. Never found it anywhere around there despite a lot of searching. But it's obviously on the move and is one of several species of recent years which has moved north through the county and through the UK. The next species on our list was the moth that started the whole lot off in 2021. The first new species to be added to the county list was found on the kitchen wall of Phil Cadman's workshop house. It was found on February the 27th and was quite rightly initially identified as Dalica inconspicuella. I say quite rightly because that would be the most likely species. But I was suspicious of the location of the moth, and knowing that Dalica inconspicuella is more a moth of the Sherwood Forest area of Nottinghamshire, I began to suspect that, uh, that maybe we had Bankesia conspurcatella on our hands. The moth was given to Martin Gray, the Lincolnshire Micro Moth Recorder, and within an hour he'd come back with an identification, and it was confirmed as Bankesia conspurcatella. I suspect that this moth is more widespread throughout the UK than the few records at present would suggest. And it's certainly one worth looking up, out for in Nottinghamshire, especially if you catch a Dalek species in flight in the early months of the year from an urban location. I would be looking at this species. Not all moths are particularly colourful but many micro moths are absolutely beautiful when photographed in a decent light they're very much the equal of their larger cousins and it's a shame that they don't get more attention from the county's moth trappers however this next moth tiny columbariella is as dull a moth as it's possible to be now tiny columbariella turned up at the light here at Market Warsop in July 2021. I was just packing up and just in the process of switching the light off when I saw this little tiny moth sat on the brickwork. I potted it up and I must admit at the time I thought it was just something really small and dull and unidentifiable. I was right on the first two counts but I was able to identify it as tiny columbariella and despite initially looking completely plain, this moth does have a couple of very faint but distinguishing marks. The larva, I thought to feed on detritus and feathers in old birds' nests. This is a moth that could turn up anywhere, whether it's at a rural location or more, perhaps more likely in an urban setting. But it's not a moth. But you'll remember. This next moth is Calyptelia cuculi pinella, and it's a very similar species, and at first glance identical to Gracilaria sringella. But there are differences, and I think it was because I'm very experienced with microbes that I detected something was not quite right with this supposed Gracilaria sringella. It was sat near the top of the light and it appeared longer winged and much leggier than your typical Gracilaria stringella. I had my suspicions despite it being marked extremely similarly to Gracilaria stringella. So the moth was potted up, photos were taken the next day and the moth was dispatched 
to Martin Gray, the Lincolnshire micro moth recorder. After a few days, Martin was able to confirm that it was indeed Caloptilia curculipedella and a new species for Nottinghamshire. It is a moth with a more westerly bias in the UK and records in the east of the county are relatively few and far between, especially this side of the Pennines by all accounts. So it's one to look out for in Nottinghamshire and most likely will occur in garden traps, although you can't rule out that this moth is out and about in the rural countryside. This next species is another leaf miner, the second of the two leaf mining moths recorded new to Nottinghamshire during 2021. And it's a, an adventive species now found globally. And that's completely down to the horticultural trade worldwide. Philonistis citrella is a species of tropical origins and in the UK will only be found at garden centres selling imported citrus plants. The record from Nottinghamshire in 2021 came from Bardell's Garden Centre and it was while looking through an outdoor display of citrus plants that I found this single mine of Philipnistis citrella. Now Philipnistis citrella mines are very easy to identify. They're unlike virtually all other leaf mines. There's no visible frass contained within the mines and there are native species to the UK and the mines are exactly the same but Philonistis citrella mines are highly contorted gallery mines. They appear at first glance like the trail was left behind when a snail was crawled over a leaf. There's that kind of silvery filmy type of leaf mine and I say the native Philonistis species in the UK all produce mines exactly the same. So it's an excellent addition to the county fauna. Of course I managed to extricate the leaf and bring it back here and I was hopeful that the lava had actually pupated in a fold under the leaf edge but after there was no sign of any adult I peeled back the fold to find that it was empty. If the lava had pupated there then I'm presuming that it must have been parasitised at some time and the pupation had failed. Still, it was a good record for Nottinghamshire and I'm very pleased to have got that. One of the reasons why I tend to lurk in garden centres, there are ideal places to do a bit of entomology on cold and wet winter days. Now this next species is a plume moth. And plume moths can be notoriously difficult to identify without resorting to genitalia dissection. This one was no exception and once again we had to call on the services scalpel and microscope of Martin Gray, the Lincolnshire County Micro Moth Recorder. The moth was trapped by Paul Coombs in his Elksley Garden and was initially identified as Helinsia linigianus otherwise known as the mugwort plume but because of identification difficulties between the mugwort plume and Helinsia tephrodactyla the plain plume we had to put this one under the microscope. Eventually Martin was able to confirm the original identification and it's another new species for the county and perhaps rather surprising that it's took so long to turn up here when mugwort is an incredibly common plant of roadside verges, field edges and waste ground. The next three moths are all tall tricks moths and for varying reasons I can't show or haven't got the photographs to show. The first of these is Graffelata Lobosowski which turned up in Graham Beale's garden trap in June, I think it was. Graham had taken some photos of the moth and sent them to me for verification. And indeed, you know, I was able to confirm that it is 
Grafalate Lobozewski and another new moth for the county. It's a species that's going to turn up more often if people trap in, in the gardens and especially if there's fruit trees within the immediate or close vicinity. So this is very much yet another of those moths that's been steadily moving north through the country and is now into Nottinghamshire and is likely to become more and more common. The second species to arrive finally is the migrant moth Sardia amplana which was recorded by Martin Gray in his broad home garden on the Lincolnshire and Nottinghamshire border. Importantly, just into Nottinghamshire by a few yards. Sardier Amplana has always been a migrant moth into the UK and it's become increasingly more common in the last decade or so. It's become so common that it has indeed established itself, it's believed, in some south coastal sites and seems to be moving through and being recorded more regularly in South Midlands counties but also up the South East Coastal counties, especially into Norfolk. At long last, it's in Nottinghamshire and is likely to become increasingly more common and recorded in Nottinghamshire over the next decade. At least, that's what I'd expect. Finally, the last moth to grace Nottinghamshire with its present was yet another moth that's been moving through the country. It's such exciting times that we live in that we can expect moths to arrive here within a few years almost of first appearing in the UK. And one such moth is Grapamen suspectana, which turned up finally at Treswell Wood and was recorded by Samantha Batty. Samantha used artificial pheromone laws to attract several male moths during the day. I tried unsuccessfully at both Treswell Wood, at Curtain Wood and at Wellow Park to find a moth. I had no success and in a variety of weather conditions. Is one of the priorities of 2022. So there we go, an exciting year. So now to the two macro moths discovered new to Nottinghamshire in 2021, both very much unexpected species and from my point of view both found by myself. The first was Bilberry Pug, which was a surprise when I reared four larvae, which I thought initially were Tortrix larvae. I'd hoped for something interesting on the Tortrix line. Ended up with a very interesting pug. And on examination, once the first one had emerged, it turned out to be Bilberry Pug, and a beautiful thing it was too. Now, at the time, I was looking on Bilberry which is uh, the food plant of Bilberry Pug, obviously, but also the food plant of Beautiful Snout, a species I've not yet seen, and that was the moth that I was after. I was hoping that maybe there were some late adults sat resting on the food plant Bilberry. There wasn't, but I did turn up these larva of Bil what turned out to be Bilberry Pug in larval spinnings. I wish at the time that I'd photographed the larva and... There was no thought that there were anything other than Tortrix larva based on being in spinnings. Never thought anything else. But anyway, Bilberry Pug turned out to be new to the county. It may well be that this moth isn't easily attracted to mercury vapour light because certainly the thieves would site where I found the four larva had been trapped before by the county recorder. And although she had recorded recorded beautiful snout, there was never any sign of the hoped for Bilberry Pug. Now the next species that was recorded new to Nottinghamshire was, in all intents and purposes, looked exactly like a micro. And indeed, that's what I thought it was. I never suspected that this would be a new macro moth for Nottinghamshire. The moth concerned is Marsha Bleak Bard, a most nondescript, boring little moth. 
And when I saw it knocking around the light, it was there for quite a while. And I only, I must admit, I only potted it up last thing before I switched the light off. Didn't really look that interesting, but I wanted to know what it was, because it could have been a new species for the garden. Which it was, but also a new species for Nottinghamshire. Now, Marsha Bleakbard is one of our smallest of the macro moths that we have in the UK, and it's one of those species that most people would automatically think, as I did, that it is indeed a, a micro moth. It's similar in size, if you have any experience to the Eudonias or Scoparia moths, and in the same kind of shape as well. But it's a light tan colour with faint darker markings on. It doesn't look anything at all. Nevertheless, it was a surprising addition to the Nottinghamshire fauna, and I'd gone through all the usual forms of identification on the internet and gone through the books, and the only species that I could come up with that looked identical was Marsha Bleakbard. I ended up sending a photo to the county recorder who promptly got back to us within half an hour and was excited as I was and said and confirmed that it was indeed a Marsha Bleakbard. Now Marsha Bleakbard is one of those species that must have wandering tendencies and it is a typical species of acid moorland and mosses throughout England and Wales but it can be common where it occurs. And this moth turned up at a time when there was high moth activity through hot and humid weather. There were some fantastic nights that lasted about a week. When you get those conditions, you need to run the trap as many nights as possible. You need to make the most of those conditions because they rarely crop up more than once a year. So two new macro moths to the, the county. And I was very pleased, and it was a stonking moth to find and capture in a market warsop terraced garden. It just shows you what species can turn up if you run a trap from home. Trapping from home was something Dillis and I had never done until 2015. And the reason I didn't want to start trapping from home because I knew that ultimately I would want to start and trap every night. I wouldn't want to to miss anything. Thankfully I have not done that and I will trap regularly on every suitable occasion but not every night. It doesn't warrant that. It's all right I'm not nosing. I'm just looking and dreaming, pondering if you will on what might turn up at the light out there this year. One of the interesting things and aspects of moth trapping is the unknown, as in most hobbies, something that I've mentioned before on numerous occasions. When you switch the light on as the night starts to develop and get darker, you never know what you're going to attract. Over the years, you have a good idea of the species that you're going to get, and indeed, you could probably write them down nine times out of ten, the species that you're going to get. But usually the most interesting aspects of your catches are those species that you never predict. Sometimes, would never even dream of. Gem was one. I think that was October. And that was flying high, wasn't going to come down to the light. Well, it was a female, I just netted it, and I was lucky to do that actually, to be honest. What a moth that was! I think I might have said a rude word, but that's what the hobby does to you. It should do. If any hobby doesn't make you exclaim when you see something rare or similar, you're in the wrong hobby. <laughs>